Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at the Athlon 2 X3455 CPU, which was a triple core CPU released by AMD back in 2010. But for those of you watching who maybe don't know about AMD's triple core CPUs, first let's have a little explainer. So triple core CPUs weren't particularly common at the time. There was the obvious dual core and quad core CPUs, but triple core CPUs. The reason AMD released these, there's actually two reasons why they did this. The first reason being that there was a market demand for a lower end and therefore cheaper CPU than the quad core phenom, but something that performed better than the dual core CPUs at the time. So what AMD would do at the time would be to take a quad core CPU, disable some of the cache and the fourth core, and then sell it as that cheaper three core CPU. The thinking behind this being that they would then sell more of the lower cost triple core CPU than they would have of the original quad core CPU and therefore make more money overall while also providing the market with that lower end and cheaper part. Second reason AMD did this though was because not all of the quad core Phenom 2 chips were actually fully functional. Some didn't meet the frequency and voltage standards and some just had plain defective cores. So rather than lose out on all the money that was invested into that particular quad-core chip that they now couldn't do anything with, they simply disabled that fourth core and some of the cache and, sell, and sold it as that three-core CPU, which for AMD meant that they still at least got to make some money on that four-core part that would otherwise just have been chucked in the bin. Some motherboards, though, actually do allow you to unlock that hidden slash disabled fourth core. And my motherboard, the one I'm using for the review today, does allow me to do that. I did try to unlock the fourth core for the Athlon 455 that we're testing today, but unfortunately the reason this particular Athlon's fourth core was disabled was because it was just plain defective. So unfortunately we can't do any quad core testing today, but we can at least see how it performs as a triple core CPU. Now let's delve into the Athlon itself sporting a 3.3 GHz clock speed and built on the 45 nanometer process. This was made for the AM3 platform, boasting 300 million transistors, which is peanuts by today's standards. It uses the RANA architecture, essentially the same Deneb architecture found in the quad-core Phenom 2s, albeit with the fourth core and L3 cache disabled. In terms of cache, it matches the L1 and L2 capacities of its Deneb-based counterparts, and supports both DDR2 and DDR3 RAM. Now, what about the price? Upon its release, it was a steal at just 88 US dollars. Fast forward to today though, and that's around 125 dollars adjusted for inflation, which interestingly lands it in the ballpark of what you would pay for an i3-13100F. This highlights the gains in price to performance ratio we've witnessed over the past decade and a half or so. But enough about specs and prices, let's dive into some game benchmarks. So, I've paired the Athlon with 16GB of RAM and my old GTX 1080. While this setup isn't something you'd typically see in the wild, it's aimed at ensuring we're not constrained by any performance bottlenecks. So, in Minecraft then, the time it takes for the world to generate is often overshadowed by in-game performance. Using a creative type world with the seed Stefan tests, it took an average of 66.73 seconds from clicking Create World to Initial Gameplay. Overclocking reduced this by about 11.9%, bringing it down to 58.81 seconds. With only an 8 second improvement though, the real world impact here remains minimal. Moving on to in-game performance then. Even with fast settings, minimal particles and render and sim distances set to 5, overall performance was subpar. To alleviate the worst stuttering, I capped the frame rate at 60. Yet, the gameplay still felt and looked rough, especially when new chunks were loading in. We achieved an average of 58.7 FPS, but the 1% and 0.1% lows of 23.3 and 12.1 FPS provide a clearer picture of performance here. Surprisingly, overclocking didn't yield any improvements, which indicates that the Athlon's older architecture is a limiting factor here. Something like Optifine might offer a more viable solution for enhancing performance on CPUs of this age. CSGO proved to be quite a challenge during testing. 
Initially, I intended to test CS2, but due to the 455's age, it doesn't support the necessary instruction sets for it to actually run, so I opted for the original CSGO instead. But even on the lowest settings at 1080p, the 455 struggled at times. While still playable, noticeable stuttering occurred throughout, particularly in more resource-heavy maps like Anubis, where the average frame rate dropped to 44.4 FPS with sub-20 FPS percentile figures. Overclocking did wonders for lighter maps like Mirage, virtually eliminating stuttering. However, this improvement wasn't seen in more demanding maps like Anubis, where performance remained unchanged. In Grand Theft Auto V, optimal performance typically demands a CPU with at least four physical cores, so it came as a pleasant surprise that Athlon, despite its aging architecture and a lack of a fourth core, and L3 cache, performed relatively well. This did require the lowest settings at 1080p, and for shadows to be disabled entirely through the INI file. Going on a rampage throughout the city to stress test performance in a worst case scenario, the CPU managed to maintain an average frame rate of nearly 50 FPS, far exceeding expectations, while occasional frame rate dips into the high 30s occurred. Accompanied by minor hitches and micro stuttering, the gameplay remained surprisingly playable overall. However, similar to my findings with Minecraft though, overclocking yielded no benefits. Although it marginally increased average and percentile figures, there was no observable visual enhancement, which pretty much confirms my thoughts that the Athlon 455's older architecture is limiting potential performance gains from overclocking here. Doom from 2016 is renowned for its exceptional optimization, and even though the Athlon is a good six years older, that reputation still holds true here. Even during intense moments like the two major battles I benchmarked, performance remains surprisingly robust, maintaining an average of 77 FPS. The most significant issues we encountered were minor hitches and occasional dips to around 57 FPS, but for the most part, frame rates hold steady between 70 to 90 FPS, resulting in smooth gameplay with percentile figures hovering around 30. However, as with my previous findings, the aging architecture proves to be a bottleneck when it comes to overclocking. While we did observe slight improvements in average 1% and 0.1% lows, there was little to no discernible difference in actual gameplay. Let's take a look at the power consumption of the Athlon 455. Since I don't have a meter that logs power draw over time, my testing is limited to measuring power draw at full load. To achieve this, I run Cinebench R20 and use a clamp meter to measure the actual power draw through the CPU power cable. Keep in mind though that actual power consumption may be lower during gameplay and general usage. At stock clocks, the Athlon 455 required 56.9 watts to complete the benchmark. While this might not seem significant, it's worth noting that compared to the previously mentioned i3-13100F, the efficiency is notably lower. The i3 pulls 66 watts at most, according to Gamers Nexus's review. Overclocking increases the power consumption to 75 to 80 watts. This translates to a 40% increase in power draw for only a 15% performance boost in Cinebench R20. This relatively substantial increase in power draw can be attributed mainly to the need to use 1.524 volts to stabilize the processor at 3.83 gigahertz. So in conclusion then, I'm actually both surprised and not surprised at how the Athlon 2 445 does, uh, does today. Not surprised in that in games such as Minecraft it didn't do particularly well. I mean it was playable but it did have a lot of problems there. The big surprise for me was actually how 2016's Doom did. That was a game that was always renowned for just how insanely well optimised it was. I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily, necessarily say um, I would recommend the 455 to anyone with an AM3 motherboard. It is really, really cheap to come by these days on like second-hand sites like CEX here in the UK, for example, eBay. But then again... So are the quad-core phenoms of that era as well. So you may as well just go with a quad-core phenom 2 chip because the price is probably not going to be that much different, if at all different. And you also might just have the same luck I did in trying to unlock this 
So there's no point buying one with the hope of trying to get a quad core CPU because you're probably just going to be disappointed. But yeah, that's going to be it for the video today. So hopefully you enjoyed my look at the Athlon 2 X3455. I would appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this. I'll also put links to my Kofi and Patreon pages down below as well if you'd like to support me in creating this content. But for now, that's going to be it for today and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.